In the ultimate social experiment, I put some of Minecraft's best players in a city that has been infested with the zombie apocalypse with no help from the outside world. The players knew one thing only, PvP was not allowed until the final day, when an unknown protocol called Doomsday commenced. It was entirely up to the players to rebuild civilization in this post-apocalyptic world. They had to decide on how they want to establish their bases, build traps, elect their leaders, and deal with the unpredictable evolution of the zombie virus. The things that ended up happening were insane. I present to you the post-apocalypse experiment. At the beginning of day one, the players are summoned right outside the parameter of the city, and to no surprise, they all started to rush the city. While some players went straight for the city with greed and almost paid the consequences, Some of the players also decide to play smart and take time gathering resources. Oh, Red is smart. Red is smart. He is carrying up. There is no one in these areas and he is carrying up. Very quickly, players start to realize that for every death, they lost hearts from their max health. And this made some of the players really nervous and we start to see some partnerships. The first night came quick and unfortunately for the players, it was a blood moon. This meant that zombie spawn rates would exponentially increase and they weren't able to sleep the night away. As the moon started to rise, players started to run for their lives. A lot of them trying to take shelter in the nearest house possible and I was able to check up with one of the players, Red, who trapped himself into a pharmacy and it surprisingly worked. Playing is smart, huh? Yeah, you know, plans kind of just go loot stuff. I think I'm just... Uh, currently, I think I'm in like a pharmacy or something, just blocking myself in. I am not gonna deal with that. I even got a uh, secret weapon that may or may not be a totem undying. No way! Seriously? You've already got yeah, a totem? It was, it was just sitting in one of the houses. What the? Some players, on the other hand, weren't handling the zombies as well. I caught up with another player, Emu, who was hiding in a hospital toilet out of all places. How, how is it going? First night. Um, I'm going to... <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't even the craziest part of the night. A player named Waspier was being overwhelmed by a horde of zombies and decided he wouldn't survive if he didn't make a run for it. Oh, you're making a run for it, huh? Okay. Yeah, I kind of am. Little did he know, during his run, he encountered another player named Blue Storm, and working together side by side, they were able to turn both their fortunes around. Now moving under the city, it seems like some players were able to camp in the sewers away from the Blood Moon, and they even encountered some very lucrative loot. Nevertheless, it seemed like the first night didn't go according to plan for everybody, but the bar has been set. The zombie apocalypse was going to be a lot harder than the players thought. The next morning brought a set of calmness as the players got a reality check from the blood moon and realized that they needed to step up their preparations for the unexpected. I caught up with one of the players named Dopper who had collected some really juicy loot over the night and started to settle down in a trailer yard. On the complete other side of the city, some shenanigans were going down. Some sort of cult was starting to form with Wasbier and Emu as their leaders. They had decided to lock down the whole broken down suburban area and settled on this creepy house as their base of operations. However, with all that planning, players were still struggling with dealing with the zombies, especially when they came in hordes. And it was that time again, another Blood Moon came shortly after, and the players were handling this one a lot better. Some of the players started to collect lava on the ground, and a few more players were actually taking advantage of the number of zombies that was spawning. And Red, who we met up earlier, had now decided to relocate his base to the housing area, and he had made some sort of zombie trap to kill all the zombies for XP, loot, and safety reasons. While some decided to shelter in for the night, some players, however, were more creative than others when I say sheltering in. <laughs> Noob killer! 
Snoop Killer is just down there. He's just dug a little hole underneath and he's hiding there. He's been doing all this talking, saying he has a super base, but look at him now. But the jokes end there. In the midst of the chaos, there was something evil brewing. While I was occupied, Emu, who had now become the sole leader of a cult, and they called themselves the Cult of the Bitten, and with three other followers of hers, the cult has now started to perform some sort of rituals in the belief that the evil was within the players and the dead were here to save humanity. Worshipping the dead, they were now even starting to incorporate rotten flesh into their diets in the belief that that would help them turn to the zombies faster. But worse of that all, their wishes was about to come true. A curse has been put on one of the players. One random player has now been infected and will turn to the dead after Doomsday. This was not part of the plan. Day 2 started with a mysterious helicopter crash. This was an opportunity for the players to salvage the loot from it, from food, ores, potions, to most importantly, blood syringes. These blood syringes allow the players to recover their lost hearts that they have accumulated over the first day's deaths. And now, within that loot drop site, PvP was allowed. Players rushed to the loot drop, but a somewhat alliance formed when Dopper and Red reached the loot site first, but the zombies occupied the area. This however did cause some issues for the pair as the zombies distracted them, causing other players to quickly rush into the loot area and gather the loot. Fortunately for Dopper, his efforts did not go to waste. He was able to recover some of the blood syringes and escape without dying. However, weirdly, he shared some of the blood syringes with Red because he wanted to thank Red for helping him deal with the zombies. Afterwards, the loot drop had been completely raided and I tried to interview the leader of the Cult of the Bitten and things got a little tense. Oh gosh, I'm getting scared. I'm getting surrounded. Why are you surrounding me? Why? This is getting weird. So instead, I went to check up on the sewer people who weren't a big fan of the Cult of the Bitten, but they were getting really geared up. It looks like staying underground and away from civilization really helped them out. In the meantime, players were given extended days and a break from the Blood Moon to recuperate their losses and start rebuilding civilization. But just when they were getting comfortable, another loot drop arrived. This loot drop had more supplies, more food, more blood syringes, and as the players got more desperate, the killing started to happen. Oh, they're fighting for the loot drops. They are fighting for the loot drops. Oh, Topper! He's slain the man! Oh, oh, oh. He's going for it! He's going for it! I notice after the loot drop has been raided that I have encountered every player on the server except two players. These two players have been working as a duo from the very start and they never participated in any fights nor trades. They just want to be left alone. So, how's it going? What's the plan? I haven't talked to you two in a bit. Yeah, uh, currently we're just trying to get this area safe and cleaned up. How's the food? Show me what you've got. Uh, we basically lost our golden apples that's grown but I still have them. Oh, six. Yeah. Oh, I'll yeah. give you three. Yeah. And I'll also give you two of those splash potions of damage. They're harming two. Oh, and some damage. That's too. nice of you two, huh? Well, good luck. Hopefully, I, uh, hopefully this place sees better days. I continued to see what the players were up to in this downtime, and Dopper had really guarded his little trailer. He had made traps for the zombies and even players that tried to enter his yard without his notice. I asked him to show me how one of his traps worked, and this happened. Alright, uh, let's lure him into my fence, I guess. You wanna wanna go? Can I be careful there? You want? No, you want? Don't, don't you wanna? Oh. oh, and I'm not good. This is absolutely not good. 
It was only fair that I got involved and I knocked that zombie back because I did ask Dopper to test his trap in the first place. Overall, the players have gotten their defenses set up. They thought they had encountered it all with this zombie virus. Yet again, they were getting too comfortable. This virus was just getting started. The third day will be the day the virus goes airborne. Day 3 started as promised. The virus has now mutated and gone airborne. This meant that zombies now suddenly spawned around every player. Whether you're underground or above, whether you're in a clan or not, nobody is safe now. There were a lot of deaths, especially those who thought they were safe in the sewers. Yeah, they were caught in a bit of a pickle. Okay, guys, I'm really in a bad situation. I have no money whatsoever. For there's so many zombies, I, I... Those who were in a clan or a cult found it more difficult to deal with the zombies as they spawned in numbers around every player and the people in the clans were living in tight spaces together for the most part. But some solo players were able to deal with this much easier. The virus left the air shortly after and the players were given some time to recover from the shock of the virus's mutation. The sun was now setting on that day and the rumors of another blood moon had sparked between the players. Now, the players were really fortifying their bases and making sure they were not ambushed again. The clans were forming a stronger bond than ever, partnerships were getting closer, and the groups were ready. The Blood Moon came, and as predicted, the clans were handling it very well. The Cult of the Bitten had established their defense with their pit hole and barricades. The partnership of Shadow and Clown had a parking lot completely sealed off with no one coming in or out. And the sewer clan of the Warden, Noob Killer, and Hero Brain was all over the place, but they did survive at the end. And now the ties have really turned. This Blood Moon had spawned so many zombies in the city that the solo players were struggling without help. Dopper, who was one of the more experienced players throughout this simulation, had gotten himself into a bad situation. He was looting the outside buildings of the city, and without blocks or much resources, he had trapped himself around a massive horde. He did ask for help in chat, but nobody responded. The clans were too busy to save someone who wasn't one of their own, but fortunately for Dapa, Red's base was very close to where Dapa was trapped, and with no hesitation and no benefit for himself whatsoever, Red decided to help him out. The next morning, I got a very interesting message from a player named Goldrick. He was one of the members of the Cult of the Bitten. He wanted to show me that he had set up a trap in the gas station rigged to blow up on his command. He wanted to blow up the Cult along with himself on Doomsday because, uh, he just wanted to, he said. I hit it under here, so basically I'm going to go on a suicide mission. Whoever wins, I'm gonna act like I betrayed my clan, but in reality I betrayed everybody and bring them over here and say I've got something secret or something like that and then block us both up, press the button and explode the gas station. <laughs> With reasoning power like that, he has gotten me very interested. But on the other hand, completely out of the blue, it seemed like the Cult of the Bitten had plans on their own. The Cult of the Bitten was paying a visit to the Sewer Clan and they were being very suspicious. 
I kept watching the events unfold and the chat was getting weirder and weirder. The cult was performing a ritual to invite the warden into their group, asking him to eat rotten flesh as initiation of their ritual, and with no remorse, it was like the warden's eyes were wide open to a new life. He decided to leave the sewer that he had dedicated his life to in pursuit of the cult of the bitten, and with one last look back, he was off. He had left the sewers. The cult of the bitten was getting too dangerous now. Maybe Goldrick's plan to blow them all up was starting to make sense. Anyways, I decided to talk with the cult of the bitten and their new members to get at least some sort of explanation for what we all saw. The god has informed us to do what we can to survive. Oh gosh. Well, You're asking too much questions, I think. Okay, I think it's time for me to leave. <sighs> I just had to get out of there. I was getting way too uncomfortable with all of that. Day 4 started with a bang. Literally. So as expected, the sewer clan was not happy with the cult of the bitten for recruiting one of their members in their own home. There was a lot of tension starting to build up between the clan and the cult. But as the rules state, the players were still not allowed to kill each other in PvP unless in the loot drop area or until Doomsday has arrived. But the tension was just way too high. Herobrain, the leader of the sewer clan, had set up a TNT trap underneath the Cult of the Pitten's headquarters, and with no hesitation, Chaos erupted as the cult was in disbelief, but even with the cult's number advantage, Herobrain was still able to infiltrate their vault and steal some of their belonging. Now, the cult was hungry for blood. They chased Herobrain, but he managed to get away. With the cult in need of a rebuild, they were more hostile and aggressive than ever, and when it came for the next loot drop, they were able to swoop in and replenish some of their items lost. When the cult was rebuilding and Herobrain was nowhere to be seen, on the other side of the city, Red was busy. He had completely covered the hospital in TNT, and the reason he did that was still unknown. But with the players knowing Doomsday was close, they were getting more unpredictable, more desperate, and more rebellious. The players were given hope as Doomsday was finally revealed to them as a rescue mission by the military that was set up to arrive exactly when the final Blood Moon starts. There will be three planes that arrive in the city, along with some fuel in the final loot drop. Now everyone was in hardcore. There will be no rules, and three lucky players will be given a second chance, the final chance for them to escape this virus. With the unknown about to come, the players decided to put their last stamp on the city. Some players prepared for the inevitable chaos, while some players were nice enough to help others that were in need. But on the other hand, some players knew exactly what they wanted to do. Nevertheless, apparently, the weakened cult of the Bitten had decided to hold one last speech, a final message to accept their fate. And boy oh boy, not long after that we may have gotten a signal from the gods that they were listening. Or was that a warning? I, I feel that like this is a moment we chant something. Oh my god, okay, we just I'm almost died because of that. Lightning. Wait, did you actually get struck by lightning? Yeah. <laughs> The planes had arrived, along with the final loot drop with the fuel. The smokes from the final loot drop should be able to help the players identify exactly where the planes were from anywhere in the city. It took mere seconds from that announcement for Goldrick to pull off his insane plan, the sabotage. He was able to lure all the members of the Cult of the Bitten in the gas station, telling them that he quote unquote had extra fuel in the gas station. But unfortunately, the cult didn't know that those steps into the gas station would be their final steps.
and of course Goldrick's plan to kill everybody worked. Except he had planned to take himself out as well, but he was the only one that survived the explosion. But in the end, he did have the integrity to fulfill his mission, and that was to eliminate the code of the Bitten, including himself. Now, with all those deaths, there was only 5 players left and still 3 planes remaining. The remaining players were struggling, especially handling the zombie hordes. The little partnership of Clown and Shadow was met with a tragic end, as Clown died after being trapped in quicksand and a horde got to him. What a horrible way to go out. However, Shadow was the first player to get to the planes. After Shadow had flown away from the city, there was now only 3 players left and 2 planes. One of the players that was actually left was Hero Brain, and this whole time he was being swarmed by a zombie horde, and it seemed like he had a little bit of TNT left from before. The next morning, Hero Brain was able to get away with one of the remaining planes, and with his departure, it meant that there was now only one plane left, and we still had two players left in Dopper and Red. Red and Dopper were able to find the last plane after searching the whole day, but yet again, there was only one plane left. After revealing that it was in fact Red who has been infected from the end of day 1, he was now destined to turn by tonight. But he made one last run to the hospital with the horde right by his tail. <laughs> 